Aloha and welcome to Nonprofits Mean Business on Think Tech Hawaii. Today, we are so fortunate to have the President and CEO of the Chamber of Commerce Hawaii, Sherry Menor McNamara. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. Okay. McNamara. I had the McNamara part fine before. It was the middle <laughs> I was worried about. I'm so sorry. Thank you so much for joining us. And um, I, I just can't tell you what an honor it is to have you. We've been having quite a few guests. Um, excuse me, our audience members putting in requests for um, information and interviews with members of our community related to the economy and what's happening, especially with the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, and being that this is a nonprofit show and you also happen to be heavily involved with that, you're the perfect person to ask. So I appreciate you accepting my invitation. We would love to, I'd love to ask you a little bit about just briefly um, how you came about joining the Chamber of Commerce and how long you've been in Hawaii, just a brief little rundown of some of the history. Mm -hmm. Well, I am actually from Hawaii Island, Hilo. Uh, and so I was raised in Hilo and then moved away to college on the mainland, ended up staying on the mainland as well as moved to Japan. So for a total of 10 years, until I finally decided to move back uh, to Hawaii. Uh, and when I did move back, I didn't have a job. And so that's when I decided to go back to school. Uh, I went to get my law degree and uh, business degrees. And it was during that time that I worked at the state legislature and I really appreciated and developed the passion for the public policy making process and uh, you know, how bills became laws and how the laws impacted uh, the livelihood of our communities. Uh, and then it was during that time that, well, when it, once I graduated, uh, there was an opening at the Chamber of Commerce, Hawaii. Wow, yeah. I, yeah, and you know, the mission was to advocate for business. My mom has a small business on Hawaii Island in Hilo. And so I've certainly uh, seen what she had to go through growing up. Uh, and the challenges and the trials and tribulations of running a small local business uh, in our state. Um, obviously the cost of doing business here is extraordinarily high, the highest in the nation. And so that's what drew me to the Chamber of Commerce. And I've been with the Chamber for 14 years and eight years of my current capacity as president and CEO. Eight years. That's amazing. You know, I did a little research and watched some other interviews you had done. You'd done one with another Think Tech host, um, Rusty Kimura, before COVID-19 was even an inkling in any of our minds. Mm -hmm. And it was so interesting because you had talked about taking a situation and making it an opportunity to grow from it and, and to shine and make something good. You know, I, I can't imagine any of us would have ever thought this could happen in our lifetimes. I mean, you know, something like this, to this level. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Definitely. I think it's, you know, it's our organization as well as all the businesses in Hawaii, as well as the people of Hawaii. We all had to adjust pretty much overnight. Uh, really? Different situation that's been um, unprecedented and during uncertain times. No one has gone through this. And so with that, we had to, as for the organization, uh, we had to pivot quickly. We had to adjust what our normal business operations look like to one that could be done virtually uh, it, from an internal standpoint. So we have to sure. adjust there. And then for the chamber as a nonprofit organization, uh, our revenue comes mainly from events and, and uh, membership. And so we had to think different. We had to think different as to how can we continue to provide education and resources to our members, but not in person. Uh, so obviously many have already turned to these virtual learning um, tools such as Zoom and other opportunities. Uh, and so it's working out nicely, but what we need to think is, okay, as we create a path forward in this new environment, how are we going to change our program of work? Because events, we can't go back to the way events were before, at least for the next few years. It's not going to go back to the way it was before in terms of the large gatherings and now you have the safety and health element to it. Uh, so that's something that we are diving into 
and diving into quickly and hopefully we can come out of the waters uh, you know in a in a new way of operating and stronger um, than before yeah ab absolutely I am uh, fortunate enough to be a member of the Chamber of Commerce Hawaii and I receive your newsletters which is what sparked my thought of contacting you, which they're so informational and cover so many things. I, I, I mean, I'm sure there's a lot of work put into them. I believe you put that out. It almost seems like daily. Is it daily? Yeah. Initially we did two times a week, but we felt that the information was changing so rapidly that with the risk of overwhelming our, um, our membership, that the more information at this time we thought was critical. And so we do issue one at the end of the day on uh, new information um, and updates as to COVID related matters, uh, just so our members know what's going on. And we thought that was critical. And, you know, right now we're not looking at, we're looking at how we can support our members as well as the broader business community. And we're looking, so it's more of a service to that and we're not even we haven't even looked at the budget yet um, and you know every we're not alone in this there's so many other nonprofits that are um, getting impacted significantly oh, yeah. and everyone's looking at okay what is the path forward gonna look like and so you know while we're on this in the same situation same boat uh, it's quite a challenging moment but we need to pivot and look at this what are the opportunities ahead of us uh, and how can we think different and how can we be more innovative in what our current resources are and take it up a notch are you this isn't something we had planned to talk about but it just sparks the question are are you feeling like there's a certain industry um i mean i can guess but that we just may see for every one that was out there, close, 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 open, close, close, that are just not going to be able to reopen. I mean, is there a particular industry that you're feeling like is going to be heavily hit in that regard? Yeah, n uh, no business has been immune to COVID-19. Uh, obviously, the tourism industry has been significantly and devastatingly impacted. And as we know, the tourism dollar goes a long way yeah. through the supply chain. And so many, all businesses have been impacted in varying degrees. Uh, we did do a U Hero, we partnered with U Hero on a survey uh, as to what is the current status of business and what will they do once we are able to open doors and turn on our lights. And uh, it, it's kind of, um, it, it's, yeah, it wasn't encouraging. Uh, yeah. One out of four Hawaii businesses reported that they will permanently close if they do not get additional relief. Uh, PPP funding helpful, uh, but we are coming to find out that it's the intent is a lot, well, it was good. The implementation is a lot more complicated than expected. So there's still many, many, many questions as to whether or not they should use it um, or, or did not use it. Um, and so that's why for the chamber, we've been advocating since March um, that we need additional relief from the state to help businesses sustain during this time so that when we are able to get back to commerce, that business can sustain themselves and uh, continue commerce um, in this new situation. I'm curious if you're familiar at all with any um, regulations or what's happening as far as I'm very familiar with the residential management side and what's going on related to that, but with with actual storefront leases and rents that aren't being paid, is there any legislation related to having some type of uh, relief to them or deferring the rent? Yeah, that's a, that's a. Uh you know, I think uh, with the landlord tenant relations, uh, we had a, a webinar on that and that's usually private uh, sector uh, situation. Uh, and we've been encouraging landlords to help tenants and um, tenants provide tools to tenants as to how to work with the landlords because as much as the landlords, uh, you know, they have, everybody has bills 
And so we encourage that kind of um, helping each other out during this time. And what we've been hearing, uh, most of the landlords have been uh, working one-on-one -on -one with each tenant because each tenant is in a different situation. So mm -hmm. with blanket legislation, uh, you know, it wouldn't be as, uh, it may not solve one tenant and situation, but we'll solve another tenant situation. So uh, there's been a lot of ten one-to-one -one tenant and landlord uh, um, working together and resolving the issues, whether it's deferring rent or, um, you know, whatever it is. But that's why we've been asking the state to provide some kind of immediate relief, you know, whether it's state loans or grants or, uh, deferment of GET to so that this yeah. is one less thing to worry about and that mitigate the financial impact that small businesses are facing because really if they close their doors and as you know Hawaii is mainly local and small businesses that will change the landscape and fabric of our communities and we don't want that absolutely um, so yeah I mean I my concern is you know I, I have this desire to have them at least open things up for us in the islands and mm -hmm. not necessarily still having some controls over who's coming in from the mainland or internationally, but letting mm -hmm. us start have commerce amongst ourselves and open up selfishly open up inner island travel. So I can go back and forth as I do pretty yeah. much every week, which I haven't been able to. Um, so my concern with that, however, is because we're all so financially strapped right now or the large majority, there isn't, there aren't going to be a lot of people spending. Yeah. So even if it opens up just within the state, I know all of us are going to want to run out and have a nice dinner somewhere and have a drink somewhere because we're so excited to do that. But uh, there's just it's not going to be enough to cover some of these huge leases, uh, rent payments, and some of these you know huge department stores and restaurants that are waterfront. That's going to take some time for that really to come back. It definitely will. You know, it's going to take a good year at least to get back on. Um, close to track uh, and because businesses have to now adjust their work environment. Restaurants, you know, there has to be this physical distancing and that cuts down on the capacity of the number of people that can fill their restaurants. Uh, retail, same thing. So it will definitely reduce the revenue that they were getting from before. Uh, and so that's why I think for many local and small businesses, they, they need to use this opportunity now to think what can they do that they haven't now, that haven't done before. So for example, um, e-commerce, you know, many of them we found out that they don't have kind of a website or some kind of online ordering system. So that's something that they uh, will need to think about. Restaurants think more creatively. And on top of that, uh, encourage the government agencies to be more flexible and adaptable to the rules and regulations because it's no longer the way it was before. And so yeah. we believe they need to be more flexible in the way things are being handled, that's going to be handled in the future. For example, restaurants, perhaps expanding the space to use sidewalks um, because hmm. of physical distancing. Or Maui Brewing, for example, they got fined for promoting a the anti they, they made anti -sanit, uh, antibacterial sanitizers yeah. and they use as a promotion but I mean, this is a time where we needed anti -sanit, uh, sanitizing you know us uh, um, hand, hand sanitizers rather yeah. uh, and at the same time they need to stay afloat too so you know i think those are the discussions and actions that need to be taken uh, as we move forward with this Health and safety element to it that will that will impact revenue for businesses, and when it impacts revenue, obviously it cuts jobs, and that we don't want. I mean, two hundred over two hundred twenty thousand on unemployment insurance. Yes. Once doors open, uh, you hear estimates still about a hundred thousand will be out of a job, and so we need to work collectively and collaboratively and be flexible and adaptable during the situation. Um, absolutely. Every, everyone needs to be able to think outside of the box. And I know some of the small businesses have done that really well all across the country. I love to hear those stories. Um, we're going to take a little break. And when we come back, I've got some more questions to ask you. And um, just first off, when we get back, I'd like to talk to you about some of the programs I've, I've been reading about in your newsletter, some of the programs you have in place. So 
We will be back shortly. Please join us. Aloha, I'm Keisha King, host of Crossroads in Learning on ThinkTech Hawaii. On Crossroads in Learning, our guest and I discuss all aspects of education here in Hawaii and throughout the country. You can join us for stimulating conversations to enrich, enliven, and educate. We are streamed live on ThinkTech bi-weekly at 4 p.m. on Mondays. Thanks so much for watching our show. We look forward to seeing you then. Aloha. Aloha, I'm Kili'i Akina, the host of Hawaii Together on the ThinkTech Hawaii Broadcast Network. Hawaii Together deals with the problems we face in paradise and looks for solutions, whether it's with the economy, the government, or society. We're streamed live on ThinkTech bi-weekly at 2 p.m. on Mondays. I want to thank you so much for watching. We look forward to seeing you. Again, I'm Kili'i Akina. Aloha. Aloha and welcome back to Nonprofits Mean Business 2 on ThinkTech Hawaii. We are here with the Chamber of Commerce of Hawaii's President and CEO, Sherry Maynard McNamara. And um, Sherry, I think we had a question from one of our viewers that came in. Did you want to read that question and, uh, and let us know how you'd like to respond? Sure. And excuse me if I pivot this way, it's because my work screen is here. So there's been a couple of questions about the chamber in terms of raising money during this crisis, as well as are we under financial pressure as well? Well, you know, I think, as I mentioned earlier, uh, no business or nonprofit uh, has been immune to COVID-19. And so we certainly had to look at our FY20 budget and see where we can reduce expenses. Um, the fortunate part is we had most of our larger revenue generating events towards the beginning of the fiscal year, and we just had one more remaining. Uh, and as well as we, or the FY20 budget is somewhat um, conservative. And so um, from that sense, it, from an operation standpoint, uh, knock on woods. Uh, I think we're in an okay situation. Uh, we will expect loss, I'm sure. Um, but with that said, you know, we need to, everybody's in a similar situation and that's why it forces us to think different and see what kind of opportunities are going to um, uh, be on the forefront for us and change, you know, whether or not we could change our business model, change our program of work. Uh, because again, we, we are so heavily relying on events as well as membership. And for memberships on the membership side, um, we know many of our members will be challenged by the expenses. And so, you know, we want to help, we want to work something out as much as to the extent possible with um, those members because uh, we're strong as we're a strong organization because of our members. And see, so we want to make sure one that they continue to stay as a member, uh, and also that we can support them through our resources, whether it's virtual learning opportunities, or being a one-stop center, or have, being a resource where we can connect um, a, a member to an appropriate person that can answer their questions, find resources for them. That is our. That is what we do and we advocate for business and so we have to stick to that 
regardless of you know what our budget may look like um and it's right now i'm still closing april so we'll see <laughs> uh, i suspect we will be somewhat impacted but again everyone's in the same situation and we just have to move forward and think different do you want to take an opportunity to tell us about some specifically a few of the programs you do have in place Sure. So during this time, uh, we had to quickly, as many others, uh, change to the the virtual tools. And so, um, one from a, a internal standpoint, our team started working from home since March 17, and it's actually worked out pretty well. We have twice daily check-ins, one in the morning, one the close of the business day. Um, although I don't think there's the close of business day anymore. <laughs> I think we all lost track what day and what time it is. Uh, and so to ensure that we're all on the same page, so it's worked out nicely. Um, and for our events, we had to quickly come up with a program, a list of uh, virtual learning opportunities opportunities that we believe will help businesses. Whether it's e-commerce, um, how do you uh, how do you manage teams during this time? How do you market yourself during this time? The tenant landlord relations, uh, and um, so those different types of topics, and they're all listed on our website, cochawaii.org. Uh, we also have business after hours, what we used to. And so we had to take churn and change that into a virtual opportunity. So we had our first business after hours a couple of days ago. Uh, so that was interesting, but oh. it, yeah, it worked out well. We, it was on Cinco de Mayo. So we all had our uh, drink in our hand and toasted to Cinco de Mayo. Uh, but those are some of the things we had to adapt to quickly. Uh, but again, as we move forward, we have to see what our events will look like, what events we cannot hold at this time. How do we make up for that lost revenue? Uh, I think the biggest way we can um, adjust is to find ways to strengthen our support for our local and small business community. I saw it. you even had assistance for people just helping them fill out the forms because they're so daunting. And I thought, well, that's great. You yeah, know, so we had definitely we had webinars on the whole PPE process. We had a few of them already because it's such a complicated process. And so we brought our member experts in to answer questions. And it was just overwhelming number of questions. Uh, we have we set up a special COVID-19 website dedicated to just COVID-related resources um, and a Q&A section where they can submit a question and we'll answer them or connect them to the right person that can answer the question. Uh, but now we're pivoting from you know, how to apply to loans, et cetera, to what's next. What's, what's next in terms of recovery and revitalization and resilience? So uh, we're coming up with a five-point plan uh, and to, um, you know, to adjust our, our work to this new environment and our path forward. Uh, so it, it's been a definitely, as with everybody else, had to adjust overnight. What, I had two questions. One is, how, do, you, do you partner with very many nonprofits and also how much communication or contribution or how often does the government reach out to you for input or, or do you reach out to them to give your input? <laughs> uh, yes, yeah, so we have nonprofits as members as well. And so as you know, nonprofits, uh, while they serve a different function, they still run as a business. And so they have fixed costs, they have programs, um, and they are definitely being impacted. And you know, it's encouraging to see many businesses from the large to the small, even those have been severely impacted, such as restaurants. Uh, and despite the losses, they're still stepping up and contributing resources to nonprofits as well as those on the front lines. And so that, that's been very, um, uh, th that that purpose of uh, uh, humanity and that collaborative spirit have been very encouraging. Uh, yeah. So definitely, uh, nonprofits, the virtual learning opportunities doesn't just apply to um, for-profit companies. It's for nonprofits as well. 
uh, and for nonprofits, if they do have something specific they need to uh, have answered, obviously we want to support them in any way we can. And then your second question was just in terms of your interaction with oh, the, the government. Government, you know. yeah. Uh, so previously, or I shouldn't say previously, our main function, one of our main functions, is advocacy. So we're heavily involved in advocacy at the state legislature. Uh, so pre-COVID, there were a number of bills that we believe would have increased the cost of doing business and the cost of living. And so we advocated on those bills, um, some in support and some not in support, uh, because that is our role. Uh, and we continue to uh, you know, maintain that communication with government. So as I mentioned earlier, we've been advocating from the very beginning in March to provide some kind of state relief for uh, small businesses. Uh, we are working with the city and county of Honolulu on a program to support businesses, whether it's through loans or grants. Uh, and then we're involved, we're involved on the House Task Force of Economic Recovery, which turned out to a, become a public-private partnership effort. Uh, mm -hmm. And then also working with the Economic um, Recovery Initiative uh, led by Alan Oshima um, that the governor had appointed him to lead. So we're, we're trying to get in, uh, stay involved in any way yeah. we can to ensure that the small business voice is represented. Boy, girl, do you sleep? I'm telling you, that's a lot to be involved in. How many, how many people are in just it within the chamber? How many staff do you have? I know you have Lori, which I've, spoke, I've spoken with her, and yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Is, we, is, we have 10. We have 10 you now. You do? Oh, yes, okay. We, do. we had a couple of, unfortunately, you know, we had to uh, reduce those positions, uh, but we are able to keep 10. And one of the, uh, so we have the events and uh, department communications and public affairs department, um, operations uh, and um, education workforce development. And so that's another area that we've been heavily invested in and building up that uh, platform, especially now as students are, uh, staying home and don't have that connection to be physically on campus. Yes. So from the from the high school to the university level, we are working collaboratively with the different stakeholders, public and private, to ensure that students can continue having these virtual learning opportunities, um, distant learning, uh, work-based learning opportunities. Uh, so from having businesses talk about their business, how they started, what that entails, and get students engaged on what different businesses do and you know, to see if that's something that they may be interested in. Yeah, that's, that's amazing. I've actually owned a number of businesses. I sold my business. That's how I got to Honolulu and I'm now working for a company. But I just want to thank you so much for participating and you. giving your time. Your All of your efforts are, I'm sure, just so uh, gratefully welcomed. And um, I look forward to getting more of your newsletters. Hopefully I'll get one today. Yeah. And I would like to say whether, you know, whoever's listening, whether you're a chamber member or non-member, please feel free to reach out to our team. Our emails are on our website, uh, contact page, about us page, uh, because we want to be here to support you during this uh, challenging, challenging times and connecting you to the right people to find resources. Thank you so much. And thank you to our viewers for watching. Um, and we will see you in two weeks on Nonprofits Mean Business 2 and Think Tech Hawaii. Aloha. Thanks.